Welcome to the Fabric Spotlight, a series of talks where we discuss with entrepreneurs and industry leaders from the cloud and IoT infrastructure space about both technology and entrepreneurship. Today, it's my pleasure to talk with Anil Rao, Vice President Architecture Data Center at Intel. Anil is leading a team of solutions architects working on technology and solutions in security, edge computing, FAS, AI, and cloud solutions. Welcome and thank you, Anil. Good to be here, Rajan. So Anil, could you share a bit about your own personal journey uh, before Intel, how you got to Intel? I know you have been an entrepreneur and that's quite a switch to go from being an entrepreneur to working for a very large company like Intel. So I would like to understand how you got there and uh, how, where do you go from there? Sure. So I started my career as an engineer, um, developed a lot of uh, networking and routing software, and uh, switched over to a little bit on the dark side, trying to run product strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, this coincided with the time that I got my business degree from UC Berkeley. Ever since then, I've been at the combination of technology and product and product strategy. This is really how I became an entrepreneur because I had the experience in terms of technical background. At the same time, I knew how to read markets and where the markets were growing and working and collaborating deeply with customers. So that combination got me to become uh, an entrepreneur. In 2007, we started a company called C-Micro and uh, sold C-Micro to AMD in 2012. Uh, the key tenet of C-Micro was to build a converge solution which was unbelievably efficient from an energy perspective. We had a huge number of web and cloud customers. And um, that's really how I got into, to an extent, in terms of the computational space, because uh, C-Micro got acquired by AMD. After AMD, I helped Qualcomm and a couple of other companies um, after I left uh, AMD. And uh, Intel came up with a fantastic opportunity for me to drive uh, data center systems and uh, security architecture, and I couldn't refuse, so uh, I've been at Intel. That's fantastic. Given your vantage point at Intel, and uh, the fact that uh, you are uh, in the architecture group or the data center group, you must be seeing a lot of different uh, technologies and uh, you must uh, also be driving a variety of architectures. From that vantage point in Intel, what do you think are the trends in the broader architectural evolution? Is it cloud? Uh, uh, Cisco talks about fog computing. Now the edge cloud is the big thing. How do you see the entire infrastructure architecture emerging? All of these are good. Um, at the end of the day, the way we see it and the way I see it is uh, computational capability will be there everywhere. Uh, it's in the form of uh, dense, heavy compute that you see in the cloud and cloud uh, environments, whether it be a public cloud or whether it's a private cloud, those can will continue to exist. But compute is going to drift everywhere. In, in the past, we used to have CPUs and computational technologies and then custom silicon. And today, with the trend that you see in terms of whether it is NFV computing or whether it's edge computing or whether even some of the traditional appliances that had custom silicon, all of them are going towards a generalized compute. Uh, the fundamental reason is because I think the silicon technology is getting to an area where power performance and the flexibility that a generic compute provides is going to be extremely beneficial for the industry. And why not adopt it? The cadence of introduction that you see is unbelievable. Uh, we've been following Intel's technology for the last 30 years, and the introduction of newer and newer technologies is going through uh, a stream of operations at such a tremendous pace that it's very difficult for custom silicon and custom silicon technologies to, to adopt. And I do see that um, that cloud is continuing to grow and will continue to grow. Um, I do see that uh, edge computing is starting to make uh, inroads. There is a tremendous amount of push in the industry towards 5G and 5G related solutions. Uh, latency, the sheer amount of data being generated in the edge points 
are starting to get to a phase where I don't think it's avoidable for us to not have something like an edge compute in the in the infrastructure. So we de I do see all of these things being part of the game, and Intel plays in all of these spaces as well. You talk a bit about edge compute. What kind of applications do you see migrating towards the edge? Are there a class of applications? What do you see driving the need for an edge compute? There are a lot. Um, <clears throat> I, I wish I could, I could pinpoint to one application. Um, and it's a good news and a bad news. The good news is that uh, you can take advantage of uh, edge from so many different areas. And the bad news is that it's not a single application where you can go and tune an edge or an edge-related uh, scenario, right? So the way I see it is that edge is defined by what you just cannot do using a traditional cloud compute. What are the things that are difficult do, doing in cloud computation? The first is anything which is ultra latency sensitive. And when we talk latency sensitive, we're talking ultra latency sensitive. We're not talking about, oh, I need like 100 milliseconds or a 200 milliseconds cadence, right? Those are things that I think the cloud technologies and RAN technologies are there in order to service that. It needs to be really sensitive in terms of latency. That's one. The second is sheer amount of data that is getting produced. And that data doesn't necessarily need to be pushed to the main cloud. And this can be because of various reasons. The first reason is that it's expensive. The second reason is that the WAN links are much harder to, to, to uh, lay out as compared to uh, wireless or edge-related technologies. Third can be because of security, because of federation. There are so many different reasons why you want the data to be stored at the uh, origin point. So all of these are really the drivers of edge computing when it comes to the industry. And uh, uh, it is an interesting field and it is an interesting trend. I think the next three to five years will tell us as to how all of these things will shape. There's a lot of talk about 5G. How does 5G play into edge compute and what class of applications or what are the type of enterprise needs that 5G can solve? So you've seen this, right? Um, when we had like um, the base wireless and when you go to 2G, 3G, 4G, people started talking about how it, the base one was built for voice and then you could do text and then when you could do email and now you can kind of like do some sort of a video. You can see those things. That's the trend that uh, the infrastructure is going. 4G is still very high in terms of latency. I would say that uh, if you want to use your phone, um, you, you got to forget about 40, 50 milliseconds because that's really the latency that uh, 4G has, maybe even worse depending on the scenario. 5G wants to get that into single digits and even lower. Now, this opens up a tremendous amount of opportunity. And some of the opportunities tend to be in gaming space because of... Uh, why this latency sensitivity is important. Some of them tend to be in AR, VR. So 5G has a tremendous amount of, uh, of kind of like pull and push. Uh, the pull from some emerging type of applications which want that low latency, the high bandwidth, and the push in terms of uh, the telcos wanting to monetize their infrastructure by improving on the trends. So that pull-push is going to end up being a wonderful trend for 5G as we go forward. Excellent. Do you see data, with the movement to the cloud and these new architectures emerging, do you see data centers, uh, proprietary data centers as a thing of the past for enterprises? Um, I don't. Um, I think that uh, <clears throat> what we term as hybrid cloud will continue to stay. Um, the, the, the sheer thing is, um, if you look at a company like Facebook, right? Is that a public cloud or is that a private cloud? They have their own internal infrastructure. When you get to a certain volume and higher, when you get to a certain demand and higher, it may make sense for you to go and have your own enterprise infrastructure. However, there is tremendous amount of benefits that you get in the public cloud all their software tools, utilities, and the ease with which you can operate. Rajan Roomba, when we first started, it was a scenario where 
if you wanted a server, you had to put like a requisition and you would get a server in three months. Yep. What were you paying for? You were paying for that expensive engineer. You had a hundred thousand or a two hundred thousand dollar engineer waiting for a two thousand dollar server. That didn't make sense. Amazon changed that, Microsoft changed that, Google changed that. The way they are changing all of this is to come in and say, you know, why do I need to have an expensive engineer wait for an uh, inexpensive uh, piece of computational infrastructure? Let me make the $2,000 server wait for the $100,000 engineer. That's really what is happening. I, I can remember, I date myself, but I remember being thrilled about getting a workstation, which is a $20,000 workstation on my oh desk. My so <laughs> here's a $100,000 engineer having a $20,000 workstation. But uh, but I hear you. I mean, the, the cost of computation has dramatically gone down. The amount of time it takes to provision these resources is just fantastic. I didn't have, you don't have to wait for the servers to show up on your thing or even your desktop machines to show up. Yeah. It's just uh, you can go pick up a cheap laptop and my 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 um, fifth grade student, probably these days, even like five year old student, they have Google accounts and they put all their information in Google Docs and Google Drives, right? So uh, the world has changed. Uh, I had to buy this Microsoft license and I had to justify to my 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 manager as to why I need a Microsoft Word license in order to run this. The world is different today. Absolutely. You're very familiar with the fabric. You have been uh, with us a few times, talked to us. We have tapped you on for advice. Uh, could you say a few words about the fabric's approach to creating these infrastructure-oriented uh, uh, companies? Uh, any thoughts? Uh, I think I think you guys bring a couple of key things that um, I don't see anywhere else in the industry, and and the first is the sheer experience. Um, a lot of times when entrepreneurs start, they actually don't know where to start. And uh, the model that you have where you work with budding entrepreneurs is a good model where you can tap into pure technical talent, people who have the entrepreneurial spirit, and then encourage them through your experience and guide them through the process in building uh, successful companies. And uh, you know, we got introduced when you were still doing VeloCloud to an extent. VeloCloud hadn't even exited by the, when, when we got, first got connected. And I think the exit that you have seen in some of your companies is, is, uh, is a testament to the good work that uh, the fabric does. So I do, I do think that um, it is a good and an extremely encouraging model. And I do encourage entrepreneurs, especially budding entrepreneurs, to come to you, take a look at this. Hey, I th want to thank you for the infomercial for- Oh, is that entrepreneur. an infomercial? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the concerns that I read about with the emergence of the edge infrastructure is all about security. There are a variety of security concerns. People are concerned about the attack surface increasing, especially with now microservices coming along, edge coming along. All of these things seem to be increasing the tax surface. What is your view on uh, on the security trends or how do you see this being uh, playing out in the adoption of IoT, for example, at the edge or any other applications at the edge? I, I think that's a good question. <clears throat> I, I think, um, it, it, yes, the attack surface is increasing, but um, I, I want to talk about it from two different perspectives, right? The one is if you are an operator or you're an enterprise, the fact that your assets are distributed is actually good because uh, it, it's just like uh, if you have a house and you have all your jewelry inside the house, if something goes wrong, everything is out, right? But you distribute it in multiple places, then the probability of everything going uh, haywire is low. So from that perspective, it is good. But the other end is also true where you see that uh, computational capability is distributed, widely available, whether it's the edge or whether it's the cloud, where um, it is easy for people to 
get computational capabilities and do some sort of distributed denial of service type of attacks. So both of these are things that the industry uh, needs to watch for. And the good news is that there are a lot of companies which are emerging and a lot of technologies that are, that are in place and people are working, uh, including technologies that Intel works and provides, that actually does a reasonably good job in, in providing secure and secure infrastructure and solutions. But security is one of these areas where anytime you innovate on any direction, you have to think security and you have to, uh, in certain cases, incorporate best practices. In certain cases, you have to incorporate security capabilities or innovate in security as well. So you do see these things happening and I think the industry is going to be promising here too. Fantastic. Uh, Intel is a CPU company with massive amount of innovations in the CPU architecture with uh, mobile transport self-driving cars, GPUs have also taken on importance. How do you see these architectures playing together and what's your view on what would be the architectures that could help in the areas of uh, emerging IoT, mobility, all of that? Yeah, very good question. Uh, first of all, uh, Intel was a CPU company. We are a technology company. so. We don't look ourselves as a company which is just sheerly focused on CPU. Um, our, if you look at some of the recent announcements that we brought out of our Movidius uh, line of business or our neural network processors or um, even, even our FPGA in terms of assets, um, there, is, there is a tremendous amount of technology and technology assets that uh, Intel has. And all of these things provide our customers the wide variety and wide capability to use a multitude of, of, of technologies and multitude of assets in order to solve their problem. Now, uh, GPU does some things and GPU does some things well, but it's not that a GPU is the nirvana of the world, right? So you need various assets to solve various types of problems. And that's where I'm so bullish on Intel in that the core of the company and the core IP and the core technolo technological assets that we have is so good that we continually watch, we continuously see the trends and we act. This is really how we as a company build and move things forward. So uh, I, I do see that there is a place for everything and uh, and I think at the end of the day, um, Intel has the strong basis in order to win. As a uh, closure on uh, our discussion, I'd like to give some, uh, what's your parting advice to entrepreneurs? You've been an entrepreneur. You're now working for Intel. You, so you would see entrepreneurs approaching Intel for a variety of reasons. What would be your advice to entrepreneurs and how would they, how would they be able to interact with a company like Intel? Um, a very good question. <clears throat> I, I think Intel is a very hungry technology company. And uh, if entrepreneurs are interested in collaborating with Intel, uh, at the end of the day, it's got to help Intel in, in uh, furthering our business, our technology, and our presence in the market. Um, nothing new. Most, most companies expect, expect the same thing. And uh, Intel as a company is a huge company. It's got so many different assets and so many different groups. It can tend to become very difficult for entrepreneurs to work and collaborate. My best advice is to really look at uh, what problems the entrepreneurs are trying to solve and then approach the right engineering or right business leader who's responsible in order to find a solution similar or in the same space that the entrepreneur is, is working on. And uh, <clears throat> Intel has great assets in the form of Intel Capital, um, and you, you see Intel presence everywhere, right? So you can use any of these as means in which you get into um, working with, with Intel. Well, thanks very much, Anil. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching, and uh, please stay tuned for the next Spotlight. Mm -hmm.